Hi and welcome to this energy update for the month of November. In Chi Flow with Joe, we are going to be specially concentrating on optimizing your sea swimming practice with Qigong, food medicine and acupressure. And I'm going to cover why and how all these can work together to optimize your sea swimming in this video. And hopefully you'll join us in November. So there's no doubt about the popularity of sea swimming. It's massive, it's really exploded. And in 2020, there was a study done and it said that 87% of swimmers were over 40 and 65% of swimmers were women. I mean, that's a massive chunk of the demographic. And that's my demographic. I'm a woman and I'm 55. So why is sea swimming so good and so popular for women of our age? because really I find, I don't know about you, but I find gyms quite intimidating places and indoor pools. There can be kind of like an air of kind of being watched or judged. There's a lot of equipment I don't know how to use. There's lots of other people and you're kind of like, are you using that? Am I using that? What's happening? And there can be just an amount of body shame and in the water, everybody is the same. You're connected to nature, you're part of the water, and what you look like and how your body is, is not important. Also, it's much more accessible to all levels of fitness because the water actually helps to elongate the back and relieve pain. We all know the anti-inflammatory properties of this amazing sea swimming. But in Chinese medicine, Cold wouldn't often be recommended as good for your health. Cold is often seen as constricting. It stops blood flow, it stops lymph flow. If you think about what happens to metal when it gets cold or anything when it gets cold, it comes together like this. If you think about water, when it freezes, it doesn't move so well. And really in Chinese medicine, one of the fundamental causes of disease would be stagnation. Stagnation of blood, stagnation of energy, lymph, digestion. These would all be quite common symptoms. So why would it be good for you in Chinese medicine? Well, we can use the theory of yin yang to explain this quite perfectly. So you're probably familiar with yin and yang. It's that circle where half of it is cut and it's black and white with a little dot of white in the black and a little bit of black in the white. This is yin yang and that symbol has been around for thousands of years. And it talks about the interplay of life it's how we understand life. We know tall because we know small. We know hot because we know cold. We understand things in terms of extremities and differences, comparison, if you like. And the thing that happens when we go sea swimming is this intense cold, actually, the cold is yin. Yin is the dark aspect, it's the still, it's the quiet, it's the cold, it's the winter. But this cold, actually, when you get to the end of something, it flips to be the other way. So when you get to extreme yin, it flips and becomes yang. I'll give you another example, war. War is an extreme yang activity. It's very hot, it's very noisy, it's full of action, doing, 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 but on its completion, when yang has got to the end, you get to death, which is complete stillness, complete quietness, ultimate yin, when everything goes black, dark, still, and quiet. So do you get what I mean? That's what's happening when you go sea swimming. When you enter the water, that intense cold activates the internal fires of the body to start warming you up from the inside. You might notice that you start to shiver and you have this extreme yang response. 
And you need to take care of that yang response because what you want is you want to get out of the water looking a lovely glowing pink that the cold water has stimulated your blood circulation to make your skin look pink. So don't get out of the water when your fingers and toes have stopped moving, when they've already gone white, because then you have then flipped back into the yin. You need to stay in the yang response. What can also help this yang response, because when we get out of the water, we're kind of shivering and we're cold. So we can really help the yang response of the body by eating and drinking yang food. So food in Chinese medicine, not only is it linked to an organ system, a time of year, a color, lots of other things, but it also has a thermal nature, which means it's either warming or it's cooling. So you want to be taken, when you come out of the water, have a flask of tea ready that's full of warming drinks. So I don't want you to be having cucumber, lettuce, mint. No, 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 no. These are not warming foods. And the other thing not to take is bananas. Bananas are a subtropical fruit and in Chinese medicine they have a cooling property to them, sticky and cooling. So they can cause constipation, they can cause stagnation and they cool the body. So don't be having your bananas. Instead, I want you to take warming foods that really keep those digestive fires going from the inside. Foods like ginger, cacao, clove, cinnamon, cardamom, cumin, coriander, all of these. Can you feel how warming they are? Traditionally, we take them in kind of like Christmas. Uh, you can often smell cloves and cinnamon. We, these are kind of Christmassy winter drinks. And I have made a download sheet with three teas on that you can make to have in your flask when you go swimming, completely free to download. And it's got all those wonderful ingredients to keep you warm on the inside. But even before you have your cup of tea, even before that, as soon as you get out, the first thing I want you to do is dry your feet. Your feet are got some really important points on them, some very important points. I mean, they've got liver three, spleen four, spleen six, all about the blood movement of the body. But the points I'm gonna look at today with you are kidney one and kidney three. Now, the kidney system, when I talk about kidneys in Chinese medicine, I don't just mean the organs. I mean the whole energetic system. And in Chinese medicine, this comes with an emotion. The emotion for the kidneys is fear, is terror, is that kind of fight or flight response. The color for kidneys would be blue-black. So quite often, adrenal fatigue, you'll see blue-black circles under the eyes. The time of year for kidney is the winter. It's that ultimate yin. It's very, very quiet because kidney energetic system is responsible for the core of the body. Really, our reproductive system, our hormonal system, our bones, our skeleton, our brain, our bone marrow, can sometimes be seen a similar equivalent, it's not the same, but similar, is our DNA. The way in which we reproduce our cells. Every day, skin cells die and have to be remade. Every day, hair cells are being made. At a slower level, bone cells are also being made. Every seven years, our whole body has regenerated itself. And if we keep our kidneys strong, that regeneration energy is also strong. But what can really weaken the kidneys is cold. So you have to make sure you keep your physical kidneys warm 
and kidney one and kidney three on the soles of your foot. So, or feet, you've got two feet. So let me show you where the points are. Now, kidney one is on the sole of the foot, sole of the feet. So if you make a scrunch up with your toes, it's that kind of little hole that almost comes right in the ball of the foot. So it's not in the center of the foot, it's right in the ball of the foot there. And you can activate kidney one by scrunching the toes up scrunch the toes up. Now kidney one descends the chi, it takes it down and it's really great for grounding the energy, for stopping any kind of vertigo or dizziness. Let's do the other side, kidney one, scrunching that up. So keeping kidney one and kidney three. Let's have a look at kidney three. Kidney three is behind the ankle bone, in between the ankle bone and the Achilles tendon. And you can just give that a lovely massage there. So you wanna make sure when you come out of the sea that you wanna be kind of rubbing these points and really bringing some warmth to these points. And I would really recommend going swimming in booties. Now, booties any time of the year, but especially in the winter. You really need to keep your feet nice and warm. Let's do kidney three on the other side. Now, as I said, the kidney energy in the body actually has kidney yin and kidney yang. And if you're low in kidney yin, you might find some of your symptoms are hormonal imbalance, dizziness, vertigo, any of those kind of extreme menopause symptoms, especially kind of like night sweats, um, dry mouth, thirst, itchy ears, internal dryness, vaginal dryness, um, a ringing in the ears or any kind of ear loss, that itchy ears, these are kidney yin deficiency symptoms. So you don't want to make your kidneys any more deficient by getting the feet cold. More symptoms, kidney yang deficiency symptoms would be more premature aging because you haven't got that kind of fire to fire up the body of um, reproduction. So that also means that you've got low libido, perhaps also premature ejaculation for men, for women that would be maybe just kind of like a loss of your mojo, like you really um, feel flat a lot of the time. Uh, also cold lower backs and cold limbs would be a, sim a symptom of low kidney yang. So making sure that you, when you come out of the water, you dry your feet first and you focus on the kidney. Now all month, in Chi Flow with Joe, we are going to be focusing on improving those kidney yin and yang symptoms. I mean, think of what happens when water gets cold. It becomes ice and it doesn't move. So we don't want these to get cold. We warm our feet. That's the first thing to do. Warm your feet, put your socks on, put your boots on, and then make sure you've got a warm, a nice warm back, maybe even get a kidney warmer, make sure you've got a scarf to tie around your waist to keep those kidneys extra warm. And then you can put your dry coat on and you can put your clothes on, making sure you've got lots of layers to trap that lovely air, keep you warm and have your lovely warming cup of tea. But what about before getting in the water? What do you do before getting in the water to really optimize the effects of this cold water swimming? Well, we've all heard Wim Hof talk about the power of breathing and the Wim Hof breath method. So Qigong is similar to that, but it's not perhaps so intense. It's quite easy to follow. And using some of the Qigong moves, Qigong, Qi means energy, Gong means working with, mastering, kind of exercising, moving, means we can actually learn to move our energy, direct our energy. Because as I said, this yin and yang also happens in the mind. When we enter the water, we can kind of experience this extreme stillness because the body has kind of gone 
the real, but rather than go into shock, let's just really kind of move with this and become one with the water and really experience this mental clarity that can come with the sea swimming. And you do that by directing the breath. So let's do a little tiny bit of Qigong now and I'm gonna do it sitting. You can do it sitting or standing. So the first thing I want you to do is inhale, big belly. Exhale, send the belly button back to the spine. Inhale, big belly. Exhale, send the belly button back to the spine. Now sit as straight as you can and feel almost kind of like a rod inside the body. And inhale and draw this energy up to the heart and then imagine pushing out. So you imagine you're kind of creating this bubble around you. And now inhale, draw the energy back into the heart, into the chest, exhale, push it out to the side. So you're extending your chi bubble to the side. Inhale, bring the energy back in. Exhale, take it down to the lower belly. So you see, it's quite easy to do. It's quite easy to follow, not so hectic or intense as other breathing techniques can be. Inhale, feel the energy come up to the heart. Exhale, Inhale, exhale, feel as if you're getting a chi bubble all the way around you. Exhale. Keep doing this. Exhale. Inhale. Feel the energy coming back into the body. Exhale. Feel as if you've got a chi bubble all the way around you. Inhale, draw it in and bring it down. So we focus the breath and we focus the mind on the breath so that instead of the body going into a stress response of fight or flight, we remain calm and the body doesn't go into a sense of trauma and a sense of shock. And in this way, we really re release the endorphins and that good feeling because we're connected with nature. We're gathering in all the energy around us and taking it down to our lower belly, our lower dantian. Inhale up to the chest Exhale. Inhale. So by using these breathing techniques, you can actually stay in the water for longer. Inhale back into the center of the chest. Exhale down. So really feel the body warming up now from the inside. Inhale up to the chest. Exhale. Feel that chi bubble. Feel it coming right to the center of the palms. Draw the energy back into the chest. Exhale out to the side. Feel that energy coming right down to the fingers. Inhale, exhale. And just see whether your mind is now feeling much calmer. So with this yang activity and this repetitive movement, we begin to still the mind. And stilling the mind means that we don't go into the trauma, we don't go into the shock, and yet we release these endorphins and these feel-good hormones, which is why we love swimming. It's why we love outdoor swimming. And remember, the other part of outdoor swimming that we love is the camaraderie. And don't forget, in Chi Flow with Joe, there's over 380 of us live. Now we're not all live every morning, but there's at least 90 of us live every morning practicing chi flow together. Pretty much it's all women. I think we have about five men, but we are there live every morning. And if you're a sea swimmer, you know the benefits of that camaraderie, of starting the day 
every day in a positive direction, setting your boat in the direction you want to go, which is healthy mind, healthy spirit, healthy body. I hope that's given you some insight as to how sea swimming fits with Chinese medicine. And remember, there's the ask me anything. So if you've got any other questions and you'd like to know something specific, then ask me anything in the Ask Me Anything Qi Flow podcast. May you be happy and may you be well. May I be happy, may I be well, and may all beings everywhere be happy, safe and well. Cold water swimming does not suit everybody. If you're not sure, if you've already been diagnosed with a heart condition, high blood pressure, epilepsy, um, or a stroke, any of those conditions, or you're just not sure, please do consult your doctor before go see, going sea swimming. Otherwise, have a chi day and I hope to see you in the chi flow.